I'm Rob, and today we're going to be analyzing the design of Hades. The game, not the place. Or the god. Well, I mean, technically we will be analyzing the design of the place and the god, but only as they appear in the game, and let's just get started. I'm getting a bachelor's degree in game design. Shortly after Hades came out, I had three separate professors, completely unprompted, completely independent of each other, and all on the same day, tell me I should play Hades to see an example of good design. And if that's not a ringing endorsement, I don't know what is. Hades is made by Supergiant Games, and I've been a fan of them for years. Bastion was an amazing experience that blew me away. Transistor made me fall in love, then broke my heart and had me asking for more. Pyre was a game. So naturally, I expected great things from Hades, and I was not disappointed. But the fact that Hades is so good makes it difficult to analyze. It's easy to see problems in design. They make us feel bad. We can point to them and say, that needs to change. It's much harder to identify the specific things that make us feel joy, however. And the best design choices are often so subtle that you might not even realize they exist. But I'm going to take a crack at it anyway. Also, spoiler alert, I'm going to talk about some important plot points in this game. Hades is classified as a roguelike game. That is, a game like the 1980 classic Rogue, wherein you explore a randomly generated dungeon with randomly generated monsters and randomly generated loot. Some see Hades as a roguelite, meaning that it borrows many of the design concepts from the rogue genre without following the formula too closely. You play as Zagreus, the son of Hades, whose goal is to escape Hades, both the place that the dead live and the father that he feels betrayed him. But getting out of Hades is no easy task. There are hosts of tough enemies standing in your way and an ever-changing labyrinth of rooms to get through. Hades has three engagement types, sensation, narrative, and challenge. Sensation generally refers to the graphics and music of a game. Supergiant Games has always done a fantastic job on both of these, and Hades is no exception. The artwork is gorgeous, and the music enhances the emotion of every location and every scene you experience. Narrative is the story of the game, both the overarching plot and themes, and the individual dialogue of each scene. This is another thing that Supergiant Games has always excelled at, and they really knock it out of the park here. Zagreus is a strong protagonist, and we have a strong antagonist in the form of his father, Hades. Their rocky relationship drives much of the plot. You've also got a whole host of fun and memorable characters, many with their own storylines to follow. Challenge is how hard the game is, and Hades is hard. You will die again and again. And again. And again. But every time that you get a little bit further, or beat the boss that was giving you problems, you get a rush of endorphins. That feeling of overcoming a tough challenge is hard to beat. Being a total pro gamer, I, of course, have not had any trouble with this game. I've definitely beaten it, and I totally haven't died countless times without ever tasting the sweet taste of victory. No, you're a noob! Anyway, these three things, sensation, narrative, and challenge, are what most make the game fun and keep you coming back. But while these are the core engagement types, Hades nails many more. The thrill of discovery with each new room and power, the fellowship you feel with the other characters, the fantasy of being a powerful god, the list goes on. Honestly, Hades has got a little something for everyone. But what I feel Hades does best, the thing that really keeps me coming back for more no matter how many times I die, is the random reward system. If you've taken a high school level psychology class, you'll probably be familiar with the basic idea of operant conditioning. You can enforce certain behaviors by giving rewards when a person does the thing you want, and giving punishments when they do the thing you don't. Operant conditioning is most effective when the reward schedule is random. You don't want to give out the rewards every single time, and you don't want to give them at predictable intervals. When a person knows for certain that they can get the reward every time they do the thing, 
then they'll only do the thing when they want the reward. If a person can't be certain if they will get the reward this time, they fear missing out, and so they keep doing the thing. That uncertainty of not knowing if you'll get the reward this time is a big part of what motivates people to keep trying. In the case of Hades, the behavior they want to enforce is, go to the next room. You can quit anytime you like, even in the middle of an escape attempt, and not lose any progress. But you know there's a reward on the other side of that next door, and it will only take a minute. So let's just head in there real quick. Oh, look, the next room has another reward. We can just do that one real quick. And suddenly it's two in the morning. Operant conditioning can and has been used for some questionable business practices in the gaming industry. It's the reason loot boxes are so addicting. It's relatively harmless in Hades, because you aren't being asked to spend any extra money for in-game rewards. The worst that happens when you play just one more run of Hades is that you lose out on sleep, or possibly find yourself late for work. But your wallet won't get any lighter as a result. But please take care of yourself, get some sleep, and don't lose your job over a video game. At first glance, Hades appears to follow a fixed reward schedule. That is, one where you receive a reward every time you do the thing. But not all rewards are created equal. Hades will tease you and display the type of reward you can expect before you enter the next room. But you won't know exactly what you're getting until you finish the room's challenge. And some of the godly boons you can receive are a bit of a letdown. Or perhaps they would be good if you were using a different weapon. In these cases, you aren't really getting a reward. Godly boons and other things you get from completing the room are pretty obviously rewards. But what if I told you they aren't the only ones? It turns out, when you have core engagements besides challenge, you can give out some rewards more subtly. One of your rewards for ending an escape attempt, successful or otherwise, is the chance to talk to people in the House of Hades. You can chat with Hypnos about how you died, have a brief argument with your father, discuss tactics with Achilles, and of course, pet the puppy. There is a massive amount of dialogue to be had, and it is rarely repetitive. There is, of course, a limit on how many spoken lines are in the game for each character. But for most characters, I have yet to find it. Even Cerberus has unique narration every time you pet him. And of course, there's no guarantee that the person you want to talk to will be there, because they are selected by the game randomly. Dang it, Meg, where are you? I need to give you a present so we can bang! This randomness extends to the rooms you need to get through as well. The layout changes each time you try to escape, and since challenge is one of our core engagement types, the randomness of these combat scenarios can be seen as a reward. Which fight will you be facing to get that godly boon? You'll have to enter the next room to find out. And of course, it isn't always a fight on the other side of that door. This extends further to the bosses. After you've proven you can get through Tartarus by defeating the Fury Megara a few times, your next run will have you facing her sister Electo who has a much more aggressive fighting style. After you beat her a few times, your next run will pit you against their other sister, Tisiphone. Subsequent runs will pick a Fury sister at random for you to face. The Bone Hydra at the end of Asphodel also changes a bit each time, though primarily the change is simply which heads spawn in the first half of the fight. Theistius and Asterius, the bosses for Elysium, will also have different godly boons of their own to throw at you each time you face them. The randomness of these bosses is pulling double duty here. Not only does it act as a random challenge reward, it also keeps the game from feeling too repetitive. Just because you beat the boss of an area once doesn't mean you can do it again. And that randomness continues towards your gear. Hades encourages you to try different weapons by giving a randomly selected one a Dark Thirst, giving you bonus darkness for this run, darkness being the resource you use to buy and upgrade skills. You don't have to use a thirsty weapon for this run, but you'll be missing out on that sweet, sweet darkness if you don't. Weapons are given further randomness when you find a Daedalus Hammer, which can drastically change the way a weapon works, and lead to some very different runs even when using the same weapon. You're also encouraged to try different weapons to seek out Titan's Blood, which can be gained by defeating certain bosses with each weapon. You only get one Titan's Blood per weapon though, and the next time you defeat that boss with the same weapon, you'll just get darkness. Annoyingly, the game doesn't actually tell you whether or not you've gotten the Titan's blood until you've actually started your run and committed to the weapon. They could have showed you where you've gotten your Titan's blood here in the weapon menu, where you can spend your Titan's blood. Um, but okay, maybe that's an oversight, maybe they just didn't think of it. Except it's not an oversight. When you bring it up to Skelly, he makes fun of you for not keeping track of it yourself. How am I supposed to keep track of which weapons I've owned these with then? 
I don't know, there's always the invention of writing stuff down. You'll figure something out. Write it down? I haven't had to physically write stuff down for a game since the 90s. And now you're telling me I gotta... What? It does? What do you mean I have to beat the game first? What kind of... In conclusion, Hades is a really fun game that offers a variety of engagement types, and their use of random rewards will keep you coming back for more. Thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you next time. But for now, I've got some daddy issues to work out. <laughs>